Does your gal need some makeup? We're talking paint in the hangar. Hello and welcome to In the Hangar. I'm Dan Milliken, and we are brought to you by Wingfield Aviation. They're our main title sponsor, and I'm very proud to uh, be able to say they sponsor us. If you need any kind of aircraft maintenance, they're your people to go to. In this episode, we are talking with Painting Planes, Luke and Anthony. Guys, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having us. All right, so Painting Planes, it, that is something that I really don't know anything, and I'm an airplane owner. I've never had my plane painted. It came to me pretty good, although now it's not looking so good. So tell me you, tell me a little bit about yourselves and, and how you got into aviation, what your level of aviation is. So um, I grew up in auto paint and body my whole life, and uh, we did a lot of mobile repair, and I traveled a lot, so I wanted to get into aviation so I could travel more quickly. So uh, people found out what I did, and uh, they had me work on their airplanes, and word of mouth spread, and now I don't even mess with cars anymore, and I only do planes. So do you have a, uh, a pilot's license? Well, I'm still a student pilot. So okay. I, I got uh, started on my pilot's license, and I got so busy working on planes that I I don't fly as much, and uh, I'm still a student. I still fly. How, how many? Where are you at in your student process? I'm about 38 hours, and uh, we got my solos done. I need to have like five hours cross country, so I'm, I'm right there. I'm passing my uh, practice tests. All right, 90%. cool. Yeah. Anthony, what about you? I grew up restoring classic cars with my dad. I did a lot of uh, body work myself. He would, we would strip cars together. Uh, we've done a whole lot of stuff like that. And I always wanted to work in the company that him and his dad worked in doing the mobile thing. And a couple of years ago, it finally, you know, I had the opportunity to join in. And it was before we actually started doing airplanes. And I never thought I would be able to get this far, you know, be able to see all the cool stuff I've seen. So, so are you still doing automotive? No. So you're full-time yeah. painting planes. Mm -hmm. yep. Absolutely. All right, cool. When is the right time for an aircraft owner like myself to paint my plane? I'd say whenever it's you know, struck, you know, compromising your, your metal underneath, if you get, have exposed metal or widespread cracking, um, if it's a good, I would say like maybe if it's down for annual, to think of like after an annual, I would say. So get, get everything taken care of mechanically. You still have mechanical issues, um, I would get those taken care of first because that's, that's your main, like you're gonna wanna have a safe plane to fly and then maybe start worrying about the uh, the paint. Yeah, but when do I know as an owner when to paint? I'm not like when as far as calendar, but when as far as, I, I, got, I mean, I've got, I got some paint flaking off here right. and there, but mm -hmm. is it time to paint? I would say if it's really widespread, you know, one thing to consider is if you go have a bid for someone to do small, repair, small repairs all around your airplane, is it gonna cost you as much or more to do those small repairs to get it how you want it, or you know, is it more cost effective to have a full paint job? Because if it's gonna cost the same or more, may as well go with a full paint. Yeah, or, and all your paint will be brand new. Yeah, or if you're looking at like a, a significant fraction of the cost of a paint job, you may mm -hmm. consider just doing some temporary repairs in, until you get a paint job. With airplanes, I know that it's like asking how long a piece of string is, but general basis, what are we talking cost to be able to paint a plane, let's call it a single engine piston, uh, a 172, I mean, that's the most common. W what's an average paint job cost? Like on a 172, I would say an average ballpark would be in between 17 and 25. And the cost, that's a big range. <sighs> Depends on how you want it to look. Yeah. It's how you want it to look. The design right. is a big factor. Uh, but one thing to consider is there are no ways to cut corners uh, when you're painting your planes. There's Why? a process. Why? I mean, can't we just, you know, spray paint it and you're good to go? Why, why can't you cut corners? Well, um, like if you, when you strip your plane, you're going to probably come into some, maybe some old Bondo repairs. You have to address those bond, Bondo repairs that are on the, probably leading edges and on your cowls and uh, fiberglass cowl, like around the, behind the, the propeller. But you really have to um, acid wash your plane and alodyne it the correct way. Some people don't do that. So you can't just paint over the existing paint? Well, you can, but mm -hmm. your paint's just not going to last near as long, and you are very prone to having problems like corrosion happen. There's got to be a logbook entry, too. Mm -hmm. So if, if you get a plane that's got a nice new paint job, but there's no logbook, logbook entry for a recent paint job, then there might be, you might want to look into that some more. 
Maybe oh, something shady happen. happened. You never know. Or somebody threw a quick yeah. paint job on it. Probably wasn't good quality. Yeah, because you don't know if those uh, control surfaces have been balanced properly. You know. Yeah. Uh, good point. Good something point. to consider. Okay, so um, it's certainly not cheap. I mean, if you're looking at a 172 that costs you know fifty thousand dollars to buy, and you cost twenty five thousand more to to paint it really nice, that's a. I guess that really does come into the pre buy decision. Yeah, mm -hmm. a lot more than I ever thought. I didn't even really consider the paint mm -hmm. when I bought my plane. Right. I just lucked into that it was kind of a nice design, and I think she's pretty. <laughs> so, why why do uh, what is the deal with white? <laughs> Why are all the planes painted white? Well, when it comes to white, it just has the most practical benefits. I mean... Oh, really? Yes. I mean, if you didn't tell already, I'm pretty partial to dark colors. I love dark colors. They look really slick good. But <laughs> w when you have the white paint, it just... It's way more reflective than any dark colors are. So, you know, pilots, they're going to be able to distinguish you from the, the air, you know, way easier. And really? I've actually... I I was thinking against a white sky, yeah. the white paint I thought would make it harder, but you're saying it's not? Uh, that's, uh, I mean. 12 times more effective. Yeah, it's supposedly it's 12 times more reflective than dark colors. Yeah, and okay. apparently, if you have a white airplane, you're less prone to have bird strikes. Really? Because the birds are able to distinguish an airplane coming their way. Oh, see, I was thinking if I ever did get my 210 repainted, I was going to go solid, you know, darker kind of thing. Now I've got to rethink that. I don't want birds. It's something to consider for sure, but... <laughs> Another aspect is uh, heat absorption. White reflects heat. If you're wearing a dark shirt, you're going to get hot. And yeah. if you're, you have a dark colored airplane, it's going to absorb a lot more heat. So you're going to have some fuel, fuel leak out of your tanks probably if it gets hot and expand. expand yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Wow. I had not considered those, those factors. Um, okay. Common paint problems that you guys encounter? Old Bondo for sure. Yes. Old Bondo. <laughs> yeah. Because a lot of the planes, some of these planes are 30 years old or, or more, very common age. And, and uh, a lot of people get hangar rash too. Yeah. That's very, very common. I have a little bit of hangar rash on my plane. Yeah. Sad to say. It wasn't me, but I do have some hangar rash. Yeah, dealing with old repairs is a, a pain in the butt. Um, common paint problems, flaking. Uh, here, you know, around the leading edges from bugs and rain and stuff. Wheel pant rash from the tugs. It's very common. Um, flaking on the belly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what are some of the, um, what's the word, pesky owner problems or things you have to deal with? <laughs> DIY touch up. The what? D do it yourself touch up. Oh, we DIY. Hate it. We hate it so touch much. Up. Okay, why? It's usually poorly done, and it, it never matches, and sometimes it's hard to get off, and it can cause other problems. Are they using, like, is there, is there a particular paint that needs to be used for aircraft? I mean, is it like an FAA-certified paint, or is it just it doesn't matter? It's a, it's a gray area, but most planes have uh, single-stage polyurethane on it, and it's always good to go back with what came, what came on the plane. And that's, that's the only paint we use is single-stage polyurethane. What, else, what are some other kind of things that might irritate you a little bit from us owners? Well, I would say if anyone uses any kind of rattle can uh, spray paint or, you know, sometimes they go to like O'Reilly's or... is it? No, no, thank goodness. But, uh, you know, a lot of times they go to O'Reilly's and, you know, they try to get a, a paint match and then, you know, they'll use brush touch up all over their plane. And, you know, sometimes there's huge flakes like this or really deep cracks and they just fill them up with paint and it just makes it a whole lot more of a job to have to fix it, you know? Is there any kind of danger of that uh, aerodynamically, or is it just cosmetic? On general aviation stuff, it's not too bad. I wouldn't say there's not much of a danger. Um, if you, um, now, if you put it on a control surface, if you caked it up, you know, you could cause it to get out of balance. Yeah, for sure. To be able to paint, do you have to have any kind of FAA certification? I mean, do you have to be an A&P for airframe and power plant? Mm. No. Nope. Now, uh, do you have to have an IA certify anything when you're done? No, yes. So if you do a full strip in paint, yeah, you do have to have someone sign the logbook, do a logbook entry. But for re repairs, touch up, no, it's it can you don't have to be certified to do it. Okay, but for the for that seventeen thousand to twenty five thousand on that one seventy two, it includes an IA oh, logbook yeah, entry. Yes, we don't have to be, but off. someone has to. Right, someone has to. Okay, very cool. Um, if I'm looking for a paint shop, um, let's say I'm not here in near you guys. If I was looking for a paint shop, what are some things I should be looking for? Get an itemized estimate. Not just an estimate, get an itemized estimate. Make sure they're doing those things we talked about earlier. Make sure they're using uh, acid etch and alodyne, or they're at least using primer 
before they do the color coat. Some people don't. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You'd be surprised. You know, f I remember American Airlines, uh, before their recent uh, logo change, all their birds were silver. I mean, they were the, uh, the aluminum polished, st whatever you call it, no paint. I remember reading somewhere that that uh, lessened the overall weight of the plane, saved American Airlines tons of fuel. Um, can In the GA marketplace, can we go to like strip everything raw and go to whatever's there? Or is, is it pretty nasty looking? I mean, there's a lot of planes that are stripped. Yeah, there. I mean, we've worked on a couple of just straight up polished airplanes, you know, that had just a little bit of like some paint stripes on it. Um, you can definitely go that route if you want to. It's just the only thing with having a polished airplane is you're going to have to keep up with it a little more. Yeah, think, yeah. You're oh, going to have to buff it pretty often to keep yeah, it nice okay. and shiny and smooth. And if that you have fiberglass cowls, then yeah. you can't polish a fiberglass cowl. You're going to have to incorporate it into the design probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah I guess it. Yeah, that would not look. And I guess most of the, the GA planes today have fiberglass a lot of fiberglass in there, especially the cows and everything. Yeah, I mean, not all of them, but there's... Um, well, not the cow. I mean, like, the front of mine, I think, is fiberglass, but the actual cows are aluminum. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. That can be common, too. Um, all right. Your favorite paint schemes. What so, do you like doing? Man, my paint, multicolor, for sure. Like, uh, there's some... There's a technique that I've been wanting to get down. We sent a video. I don't know if we, if you got, we got it up, but they use Post-it notes. And they airbrushed another color behind the post-it notes, took it off, ended up making a cool carbon fiber look on the tail. Mm -hmm. And then they, they clear coated it over. That's wow, so, cool. so imitation carbon fiber yeah. look. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I was on a big jet. Wow, on a big jet. Yeah. That would be kind of cool. What about you? Man, yeah, that's like I found that video and I showed it to him and I told him that's definitely my favorite. What was really cool also with that paint job is on the uh, nacelles, they did like a honeycomb design. Oh, it wow. was really cool. I, I really like the really intricate paint jobs. Like, I would love to try my hand at that. I think outside the box, too, all these plans look the same to me. Yeah. Look, think outside the box. Come up with your own scheme and, mm -hmm. and have it done. You, if you can send your scheme to a, a company that will make you know, a custom paint mask that we will use. We put it on and we use it in the paint process in the design so it's a painted on design okay after i spend all that money to get that really nice paint job on my plane is there a certain way i should wash my airplane not high pressure no high I would, pressure i would stay away from high pressure you can blow paint off pretty easily with high pressure well and you can also mess up you know pitot tubes and static right. ports and everything else too but what else? Anthony, what would you advise for how to properly wash? I definitely, I mean, just myself, I like hand washing. That's, I, you always get the best results going that way. You're not going to damage your paint. It's just real gentle. And one thing to, I don't, not a whole lot of people know about it, but doing ceramic coating after you get a fresh paint job will really increase the longevity of your, yeah. your, your paint condition. Well, and that brings up, I've seen a lot on social media, people ceramic coating. What is that? And why should I do that? It's a really durable protective coating. I think it's like a hardened wax. It's like a catalyzed wax. Not really wax, but it's a catalyzed coating that goes on top of the paint. It has to be real smooth to begin with, and it's really non-stick. So it, if it'll, it'll, if you put it on your belly, your leading edges, it can make it, help it clean up a lot better after you go flying. Oh. And think about how smooth your airplane is after you get a really fresh buff. It's, it's like. It stays that way. Yeah, it stays that way for six months or even up to a year. So even if I have, that. even yeah. if I have my rivets are coming up, maybe just hair, or whatever, a ceramic coat layer comes on there, it smooths it out, gives me a little bit less um, drag. Oh, absolutely. I've, I've like a lot of times when we refinish or re refurbish either one an aircraft, people will always say that they'll pick up like two or three knots, wow. even from the smooth surface. Wow. Um, okay. For me, I have boots on the leading edges. Um, now what am I looking at for trying to do a paint job and stuff for that? And you're not going to put the ceramic coating over my boots, clearly, right? Right. We haven't done a lot of planes that have boots on them, but they're, they make a good... You, you want to make sure they're conditioned. Don't let them... Like, make sure there's always a conditioner on there. They make a special boot conditioner product right. that'll keep that rubber from getting uh, dry rot. Right. Okay. Well, very good. Um, if I decide to spend that money to paint my plane, how long of a process is it? If you get it done the right way, you know, and you're paying that premium, you're going to get premium, and your paint job's going to last 30 years, especially if you keep it hangered. Yeah. You I mean, know, how long does it take? 
How long oh, is my plane going to be down? Okay, oh. I see. Uh, well, it depends. If you have a crew of guys working on it, I've heard of, you know, of paint shops getting it done in like a week. Okay. But, you know, on a smaller scale, like maybe me and Most him, paint shops, yeah. you know, maybe like a month or so. Yeah. Okay. So Depending on the design, a month to two yeah. months. Yeah. And yeah, the scheme really, it plays a big part in it. So, so at Painting Planes, you guys, uh, you, if you've got a plane in for a month, are you only doing one plane at a time? You, it really needs to be that way. You need to bid the jobs to where you can afford to work on that plane only and get it done and get it out and get on the next one. So full paint jobs at your shop, you can only do 12 a year? I mean, not <laughs> roughly. Yeah, that, that would be a lot. You could do more, but I would say on average, yeah. All right, very cool. Uh, anything else you think um, aircraft owners should know concerning paint? Look in your, if you're thinking about painting your plane or if you're thinking about buying a plane, look in the wings. Take the wing tips off, look in the wings. Some, a big thing that uh, we've encountered is, like let's say a plane's been through a hailstorm and it's been repaired off the books. And uh, you may not be able to tell if there's dents on it at all. But if you go to strip the plane and you come into all this Bondo and, and stuff, all of a sudden you have a thousand dents that you didn't know were there and it wasn't in the log books, it can really cause a lot of problems. So do a thorough inspection before you buy or paint. Oh, that's a great idea. And if people want to get a hold of you, how do they do that? Paintingplanes.com. Paintingplanes.com. Yeah. Well, guys, I really appreciate you coming out, being on the show. Yeah, that's Luke, awesome. thank It'll you be very really much. Appreciate Anthony, you having us. Oh yeah, absolutely. I I, I learned a ton. Uh, I did not know a lot. Now I have to rethink. I really wanted a dark plane. <laughs> you can still, still do can. it. Still can. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. And as always, if you like it, please share, subscribe, hit that like button, and we'll see you guys next time in the hangar.